Welcome to the Game Design Challenge, brought to you by Dell Technologies and hosted by Legends of Learning and the International Game Developers Association. I'm Renee Gittens, the Executive Director of the International Game Developers Association. I've been a game developer for over a decade. This month-long challenge consists of four lessons to teach you about the game development process from designing and building your first game to playtesting it and refining it. And of course, how to plan your project and manage it as well. We are excited to provide all learners with an opportunity to design a game, no matter their device access, age, or previous experience. Depending on the grade level and experience of you, there will be two different tracks that you can participate in. You can fully build out a video game using software or a game engine that you're familiar with, or you can create a paper prototype and a game design document to support it. This video is the first in a four-part series to provide the lessons for teachers who would like to have instructions provided by an industry professional or for students who would like to learn about game development and engage in this challenge on their own. Today, our lesson is Game Development Concept and Planning. The first step of any large project is to determine the base components of the project and make a plan on how to bring those together. In this lesson, you will work to create an initial design for your game. Then you will make a plan to bring that design to life. For this lesson, you'll need a copy of Appendix A, the Game Design Document and Timeline which you can find at the link below. Students may work independently or in teams for this project. Please, no more than four to five students per team. So first, what is a game, right? I mean, obviously we're talking generally about video games, but games have been a concept for a very long time. We have video games, but there's also board games and sports and even playground games. Are there any other games that you can think of? What makes something a game? What are compelling aspects of a game itself? What parts of a game do you find fun or interesting? Let's look at basketball. Basketball has many different components to it. First, it has two teams that are playing against each other. It has a set of rules about dribbling and passing and out of bounds. It has the court itself where you play. There's of course the ball and then you have scoring. You have normal shots, free throws and three point shots as well. All of these are different aspects of a game. Uh, you have scoring and objectives. You know, the objective in basketball isn't necessarily to score, it's to score more points than your opposing team. There is also the environment in which it happens. In basketball, you have a court, and that is the environment in which you play. There are rules and mechanics that's like dribbling the ball or passing or traveling, you know, fouls, running into other people. There's key items as part of those mechanics, the ball itself, the, the basketball hoops. And there's the characters, the people who are playing. Now in basketball, you don't care about their stories or backgrounds. In chess, you don't care about who the queen or king is, but if you're playing a story-based game, something with lore, then those characters and the story itself all matters. And I mean, really, these are the core components of any game. The score, objective tracking or win mechanics, the mechanics to play the game itself, the rules, the game mechanics, the story, the lore, the setting and the environment of which the game occurs in, the characters which participate in that game, and then any key items that are core to the game and the mechanics. Once you have an initial design, you'll need to plan your approach to bring that game to life. 
which components need to be built, and in what order, what tools you need to use to build them, and how the work itself will be distributed among your teammates. The first step, once you have this plan and the design itself, is to create a prototype of your game. A prototype is a rough implementation of what you want your final game to be. A prototype should explore the full game loop, which is the core set of mechanics and behaviors in a game. In Pong, this would be passing the ball back and forth in between the players and scoring a point. In Fortnite, this would be building structures, gathering items, and fighting with another player. Game developers always create prototypes of games before fleshing out their entire game. Prototypes are used to test gameplay mechanics to ensure that they are fun before spending a lot of time working on art and other efforts that may have to be changed. Once you have the prototype of the game and you can prove that the concept is fun, the next step is to build out the game itself with full art and other features. When you have the game working in a fully fleshed out manner, you can test and polish the game. Of course, you can test the game at any point once you have the initial prototype, but testing once you have the full game is extremely important. You need to test the game with other players, receive their feedback, polish the features that could use extra attention, whether it is because they are confusing to other players or because they need more emphasis and flair. Testing is very important because it allows you to make your game appeal to more people and will give you important feedback that you might not have thought of yourself. Finally, when you have a polished, tested, good game, you can market the game. This final step is an important aspect that many people do not consider. You can create the most fun game in the world, but if no one hears about it, no one will play it. Marketers identify the audience that the game will appeal to most, then seek out how to interest those people in the channels that they frequently visit. We will not be going through marketing the game in this set of lessons, but once you have your game ready, you should think about how you're going to put it in front of other people and get them interested in playing it. So now, please bring out your copy of Appendix A, the game design document and timeline, and create an initial concept for your game. Remember, the theme for this game design challenge is advancing sustainability. So if you'd like to submit your game for a chance to win prizes, we'll need to include that theme. After you've finished your initial design, Use Appendix A to plan out the steps and a timeline of your efforts. Keep in mind the core parts of your game and be sure to include what is necessary to create them, from the mechanics to the art. If you are making a digital version of your game, you may want to also consider sound and music. This is the very first week of this four-week plan, so this design concept and the planning, the timeline, is what you should focus on. So really think about all of these components you'll need. Go down into the details. Try to figure out every little bit of your game that will need to be created to make it a success. Next week, we'll be going over game prototyping, how to flesh out the core mechanics of your game and really start tuning it to be fun. We'll be doing then the game development, which is going beyond the core mechanics, adding in additional features, art, really making it beautiful. And then finally, for week four, we'll be doing game testing and polish. As you're looking through your timeline, keep in mind what aspects of development you should focus on in each week. If you wanna have beautiful backgrounds for your game, you should probably put them in week three, the game development itself, because those backgrounds aren't necessary for the initial prototype of the game, as they are not part of the core game loop. Thank you so much for joining us for this first lesson. I hope that you found it interesting, and I look forward to seeing all of your amazing designs.